Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back. So I'm getting ready to begin the process of growing my own blue oyster mushrooms right here at home, both indoors and outdoors. I thought I'd bring you along for the process. And although there's many ways to accomplish this task, I've opted to begin by inoculating my substrate, which is a rye berry grain with some liquid mushroom culture. We're going to accomplish this by simply injecting through these self-healing injection ports on these jars about one to two cc's or milliliters of the liquid per jar so that one syringe that I just showed you is going to inoculate all of these quart sized jars, a total of 10. Now the grain in these jars has been sterilized. It's been put through a pressure cooking process, killing off any bacteria, any contaminants whatsoever. It's been completely sealed since day one, stopping any possibility of contamination. On the lid of each jar, you see there's both a rubber stopper looking thing, which is a self-healing injection port, which is how we're going to inject the mushroom culture into the grain spawn. And there's also a micro pore patch. This is covering a hole, which is gonna allow the mycelium, once it begins to grow, to breathe. The mycelium will take up oxygen and release CO2. So it needs a place to have fresh air to come in and CO2 to escape. And it needs to be fully protected once again from any possibility of contamination. And the micropore tape accomplishes that for us. So although it's pretty easy to make these substrate grain jars yourself, all you need is quart-sized jars. You can get yourself some of those self-healing stoppers as well as the micropore tape. And then you'd need a pressure cooker to run these through to sterilize the grain. You can also get the grain in a 30-pound sack. You can also purchase these ready-made, ready to go, which is what I did in this situation. Felt like the value was there, saved myself a bit of time. And if this is something that I continue doing in the future, then I'll definitely be making all of this from scratch. So with that being said, this is a relatively easy process to begin by inoculating our substrate here. Once these are fully engulfed with mycelium, which is going to take between 14 and 40 days, then we can take this and we can inoculate a second substrate, whether it be fruiting blocks or make what's called a monotub, another way to grow mushrooms indoors. Or you can even use this to inoculate somewhere out in your garden outdoors as well. So I plan on actually growing fruiting blocks with some of these, as well as inoculating some pasteurized straw and growing them outdoors. So as we begin the inoculation, the main thing is that we do not cause any contamination as we inject each jar with this mushroom culture. That's relatively easy to do. We're just going to go around and wipe down each lid with some isopropyl alcohol mainly just focusing on those rubber self-healing injection ports there. Now we're also going to flame the needle of the syringe as we go from jar to jar. So I'll show you how I do that in a moment here. And for myself, I'm just going to put on a pair of these nitro gloves just to help keep things clean throughout the process as well. All right, so the first thing is I'm going to douse my rag here. This is just a shop towel with some of this isopropyl alcohol. Get that soaked up really nice. And we'll wipe down each one of these injection ports. All right, so now I'm going to open the syringe packet here. And these come in all sorts of different mushroom varieties. And in the packet here, it also came with a little alcohol prep wipe and the needle itself. So there's a little plug at the end of the syringe here. We're just going to twist this off. And we'll open the needle here. Twist that on. And because this is fresh out of the package, we don't need to sterilize it on the first go. We'll remove the protective coating there. And you see here on the back side that it has a measurement. This is in cc's, which is the same as milliliters. So you can put one to two cc's in each one of these jars since we got 10 jars and 10 milliliters or maybe 11 in here i'm going to just be putting one cc per jar but before we do that we want to shake the syringe up really well and i'm just going to squeeze the first little bit out now we're ready to go
after you inject each jar, you just want to give it a little shake. It's actually a good idea to do this before you inject it as well. Just to make sure that the grain's not stuck together and there's plenty of oxygen to circulate throughout there, which is going to help for a healthy mycelium set. So now you might just want to wipe down the needle with a prep pad like this, but I'm choosing to actually flame it. I think it's just a little bit better. And we're going to do about 30 seconds. That was more like maybe 15 seconds. I think that's good. I saw the tip of the needle getting nice and red hot. So here's number two. So I actually changed my mind about flaming the needle. I'm just going to use the alcohol prep pad. It's quicker. It should work just fine. And besides, there's a little bit of that mushroom culture in the needle itself. I can hear it kind of boiling up. So I don't want to waste any of that. There's probably some good spores in there. give all these a good shake so now we just want to store these somewhere in the house in a room that stays relatively cozy if you can keep the temperature between 70 and 80 degrees that's pretty hot but you know as long as it doesn't get too low that'll slow down the growth of the mycelium 70 to 80 preferable Fahrenheit then we should start seeing the mycelium running through the substrate within a week or so so just like that, in a few minutes, we are off to the races. Now, this isn't an absolute guarantee to work. The reason for that is, well, as long as we did everything correct as far as avoiding contamination with both the culture and the substrate, we should be good to go. But there's always a chance that the actual culture itself that came in the syringe was contaminated on arrival. Although it's not that common, it can happen. I'm confident though in this company that I purchased from, they're on Amazon, they had high ratings and they guarantee the product. So um, keep our fingers crossed, hope for the best. But I'll be updating you on this project as we move along. So in the next update, you should be seeing some mycelium running through these jars and we'll continue from there. So thanks for watching everybody. If nothing else, I hope that maybe this video is just a reminder that even through the winter months, you could be growing something. Mushroom cultivation is pretty easy to do indoors. So I hope you'll consider giving it a try. So with that, I want to thank you all for watching. Have yourself a great rest of the day. Until next time, this is Dan from PlantAbundance.com. Take care. I'll be talking to you again soon.